Lesson 3 is about sequences and digits. Let's talk about sequences first, and before we even start that, let's talk about counting numbers. When we count, let's say like you're counting on your fingers, you have one, two, three, four, five fingers on one hand, and then you just continue on. That's what counting numbers are. You can also see there's a pattern there. We're adding one each time, so we have one plus one is two, plus one is three, plus one is four, and so on. That's what a sequence is. It's a pattern that we recognize in a set of numbers. For example, we could count by twos, two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and so on. And the dots at the end, that means that those, you could just keep on counting forever. You could. That's called an infinite amount. Infinite means forever. I could count by threes. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, and so on. If a set of numbers that we see has a particular pattern, we call that a sequence. Let's go ahead and do a couple of practice problems. When we are observing a sequence, one thing is we can recognize a pattern that is represented by the numbers in that sequence. Sometimes we call that a rule. So a rule might be like counting by ones, counting up by ones, or counting down by ones, counting up by twos, counting down by twos. Those are the types of rules that we're looking for that represent these sequences. So in A and B, I want you to tell me the rule that represents that sequence. If you want to pause the CD, you can, and then try to figure out what the two rules are here. So in A, we're counting up by fives, right? Five plus five is ten, plus five is fifteen, and so on. So we would just say count up by fives. That's the rule. On B, we're counting down by 4s. 34 minus 4 is 30, minus 4 is 26, minus 4 is 22. So we're counting down by 4s in B. Now, a lot of times in math, the main thing math is about is about applying rules. Like when we add two numbers, 3 plus 2, we know that that plus sign, that's a rule that we use to know that we're adding 3 and 2 together to get 5. 3 minus 2, we know that that equals 1 because that minus sign, that's a rule in mathematics, that that minus sign tells us to subtract. Most of the time when we're doing math, we are applying rules to help us solve a problem. In these problems, we're finding rules. We found an A to count up by fives. B, we found that the rule in that pattern was to count down by fours. Now listen close here. Math is sometimes considered the language of science. And science is about observing the physical world, observing God's works, the things that God has made. Science, when you do a science experiment, the main thing you're doing is trying to find a rule. You make an observation, collect some information, collect some data, and then after you get that data, you try to figure out a rule or a pattern that that data represents. So doing these sequence problems like this is a lot like doing a science experiment. You're making an observation and you're finding a rule based on your observations. There are several places in the Bible like Genesis chapter 1 and Psalm chapter 8 where God tells us that he's designed us to rule over his creation, to manage his creation well. If we're to be good rulers, we must have to be able to make observations of his creation and find rules that will allow us to manage his creation well. And that is a lot of what science is about.
So doing something as simple as finding a rule in a pattern of numbers, counting up by fives, counting down by fours, what you're doing there is learning skills that will help you be a good scientist. Let's do one more problem on sequences. On this one, you have to find the rule, and then you also have to find the missing number. So find the rule first, then figure out what the missing number is. So it looks there that you're counting up by threes. If you had 14 plus 3, that would be 17. Plus 3 would be 20. Plus 3 would be 23. So that missing number is 20 in that sequence. And that's another thing that scientists do is they'll do an experiment, they'll collect a lot of information, but they may not have all of the information they want. However, they have enough to recognize a pattern or to find a rule. And then once they find the rule, they can use that to predict what the missing numbers might be. In the warm-up section of your lessons, a lot of times you'll have pattern problems. Be observant on those pattern problems. Find the rule that is associated with that pattern. And that will help you to become a good scientist. Let's look at the second part of this lesson on digits. The digits are the numbers that you use to write a number, basically. And to differentiate them from numbers, sometimes we call them numerals. Digits are the numerals that you use to make numbers. The digits are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Those are the digits. There's 10 of them, right? 10 digits. Now, you can make any number you want with those 10 digits digits. To make sure you understand digits do these two practice problems. Just tell me how many digits are in each of those numbers. Well, indeed, you wouldn't say one, you would say two. Zero is a digit, right? So you have a five and you have a zero. Two digits. In E, you have seven digits. Just count up all of the numerals that are in that number. And that's your digits. In F, I want you to tell me what the last digit is in that number. That would be a 7. 7 is the last digit. The number on the right, or the numeral on the right, is the last digit. The numeral on the left is the first digit. So 5, we would say, is the first digit. 7 is the last digit. Okay, so digits, those are the numerals that we use to make a number. That's what those are. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Okay, well that's all for lesson 3.